Hello to everybody who is willing to listen and hear this presentation, which might be a little bit of a surprise for you because amongst all of the fantastic technological stories and ideas, this one is a little bit more around psychology, sociology, and actually the topic is how to turn our customers into our fans. If you are interested in why we are willing to turn the customers into fans, then please welcome and have a story given by me. My name is Dorina. I'm coming from company Dakvas from the Czech Republic. This is company uh, dealing since 1991 in IT technology. We are working together with Microsoft and we have been recently acquired by ASO uh, and with the joint forces, we are going to deliver to you the best out of our knowledge. Either way, business is still concluded between the human beings and it has its consequences. We will be talking about what, why and how. Why we are actually considered so much about the human beings, it's just simply because the bottleneck between the technology, its meaning and its usefulness is actually the person sitting in between the chair and the keyboard. And how we can handle this fact. Uh, you will see that this has something to do with my original profession of cultural anthropologist. The experience in IT business I've collected over the successful 30 years in it. And also the picture of my bike. And I'll get to it later. Stay tuned. Uh, when we are talking about something, it's always worth to find out if we don't have any kind of misunderstanding regarding the topic. So let's try to understand similar way. What does it mean, the trade? According to Webster's Dictionary, the trade is the business of buying and selling or bartering some commodities. Now, to be fair, I would have slightly different kind of definition. I'd say the trade is an exchange of money for, yeah, for some salt needs, for some fulfilled requirements. No, actually, the business in its reality is an exchange of money for a promise. It's a promise. What will be the feeling? What will be the result if the customer is buying what we are offering to them? So, of course, it's important that the promises needs to be attractive. It also needs to be pretty much realistic. And it also needs to be reliable and trustable promise. I mean, um, it needs to be something what the customer strongly believes that we are capable of delivering to it. And it has got its consequences. Which kind of consequences? So first of all, we need to find out what the customer will be attracted for when creating that promise, the proposal, that offering to them. Because they are paying for that proposal by hard money. And the only thing which we can give them before they pay the money to us is actually creating the vision, how fantastic their life will be after we deliver to them. And they also need to have belief that we will be able to fulfill and deliver. And for to be able to create that uh, nice, prom nice um, attractive promise, that nice offering, it means that we need to a little bit understand our customers. Now, how to create the offer? Uh, maybe you don't know the man on the picture. It's Abraham Maslow, a psychologist, who identified in the 50s year on the past century something what's currently known as hierarchy of needs. We need to understand what motivates our customer to buy from us. So hierarchy of needs can help us to get this understanding. Uh, Abraham Maslow actually identified that every human being, and regardless of it's been in uh, Neanderthal in this time, or if it's been like 
the new next level of humanity has got five typical needs. And every time it's required that these needs are fulfilled from the bottom up to the top. Every time you need to fulfill one of the needs to go level up. So according to Abraham Maslow, the basic one is physiological, that there is a need of safety. Then there is a social needs, which means need for love, needs to belong somewhere. Then it's needs which are fulfilling ego of each human being. And then the final one, the highest one, is self-actualization, which is the need of creativity and growth and the ultimate demand of meaning and sensibility. So every time when you manage to fulfill some of the needs, then the human being starts to desire the next level. How this can be applied to our customers? Actually, the same way as to any other human beings, any other customers of any other branch. It's not IT specific, but I will try to make it as much IT specific as possible. So the bottom line, physiological needs. From this point of view, we are quite fine. In our European modern world, actually quite a lot of people have completely fulfilled or, or even over fulfilled their psychological needs. The need of air, food, water, health. Health. It's a little bit critical one in these days after the COVID experience, of course. But despite this, if you are talking about the customers, it's always worth to understand that it's very difficult to sell someone to somebody who already has got his hands full. So we need to have in mind that it's very difficult to convince the customer in some promise, in some future feelings, if they are tired, if they are totally out of their comfort zone, if it's too late or too early. So these are just very, very basic principles which we need to follow to be able to start um, successful discussion with our customers. Uh, let's go to the second level because to fulfill the physiological one is not that difficult these days. The second one is very important and it's the need of safety. Uh, have you ever thought about why almost every nation tells to their kids the story of the little red riding hood? It is actually the way how to follow and how to deliver uh, the idea of don't talk to strangers. Mankind actually is always threatened from something what they don't know, what is the foreigner, because it's somewhere very deep in our naturality that someone who is a foreigner to us can be also danger. We want to have our life under control. We want to be together with people we can predict. We actually want to predict all of the situation because if we can predict, we can then better react. And the better reaction and the faster reaction must be the difference between life and death. So, therefore, we actually enjoy the most the connection with people who are predictable to us. And they are predictable if they have quite a lot of common features with us. Or if the features cannot be common, so maybe at least we are willing to have the features known. Because if they are known, even if we don't like them, still we are better able to handle them. So therefore, we can then either avoid the risk of meeting or dealing with these people, or we can actually handle the risk of dealing with these people. So this is another thing which we need to have in mind to understand that by natural, people always prefer to go for something they already know or what's common to them than to go for something that is completely new. Something or someone, doesn't matter. Still, the knowledge, the interpersonal knowledge is very important. How to do it? How to 
get the business, if you are actually willing to create a deal with someone, if you are actually willing to conclude the business, you need to work the other way around as our picture shows. We need to start building the feeling safe environment from points and stones. The first one is we need to prove to our customer that we do understand our topic. So we are professionals in our way. Then the second thing is they need to know that we understand what is their interest. And the third one is they need to believe that all of this knowledge is to be used for their interest. So we are going to work towards their interest. If you manage to fulfill all these three points, then it means the trust becomes and the trust is the basic for a relationship and the relationship is a basis for concluding the deal and everything is actually uh, done through communication this is actually a very difficult part of our it business because majority of the people who grown in the traditional it environment 20 30 40 years backwards actually were not communicated experts. They were experts in understanding of problems. They were experts in algorithms. They were experts in programming languages. But communication wasn't actually so much required skill. But it's really important. Now, how to build a safe environment? First of all, let's try to convince the customer that you understand the topic and you understand their interest by offering them a help. Because by giving them a help and successful help, you might cover actually two in one or maybe, maybe even three in one because they will see and they will learn that you're acting in their interest. Also, to be capable of giving people a hand, we need to learn a lot. We need to learn a lot about our topics, about our IT profession, but also we need to learn quite a lot about people as well. So this is a part of session which is being delivered today to give you a little bit more knowledge background about the people. And we need to cultivate the communication skills. If you don't know how to help your customer, try to guess. Try to guess what they need. It's not that difficult as it might look to. Uh, here you can see actually five vital inevitable elements which every organization, every company, every enterprise, uh, even government, etc., etc., needs to fulfill. These five elements are to produce service or a product, then to sell it. It means communicate to customer and deliver it to the customer. Suppliers management because in these days it's very difficult to actually create something if you don't have sub suppliers, at least for energy, for other stuff. Then the fourth inevitable function for every organization is how to handle the operations, how to take care about resources, including the human resources, including the legal issues. And the fifth one is finance. Account for everything, pay the taxes, report, control, etc. Now, think for a while about which of these five inevitable vital elements of life of every organization can, in these days, work efficiently without IT support. I guess your result will be the same as mine. None. None. And that's why, actually, in our picture, these five elements of every organization are being pictured as the world, as the earth, but it's surrounded by the sea because that sea actually forms all of the IT support, IT technology support, which is necessary. So if you understand that your customer is in these five important elements, absolutely dependent on great IT functionality, you will definitely be able to find out how to help them in some of the issues. Let's go together with April Maslow level up in that uh, hierarchy of needs. So it's social. 
Social need means that every person requires love, to belong somewhere, to be included, to the other mankind. Of course, that kind of inclusion is something what our customers typically expect from us, is the necessary for the relationship. Uh, have you ever thought about why your customers who are currently buying of you have choose you? And it's not because you are the cheapest, and it's not because you are the nearest, not because you have the broadest offering, etc., etc. The simple fact is they've chosen you because they like you. And why they do like you? They like you because they know that you understand your topic, you understand their needs, because this is very, very important to them, and because they believe that you will act in their interest which means they like you because they decided that you are a trustable partner for them. Next level starts to be a little bit more tough. It's ego. It's the need for self-esteem, the need for power, also the recognition, very important topic in the IT branch. So if you manage to fulfill also the need of ego, then you are actually getting to the next level and you are capable of converting the satisfied customer into fan. Now, why do we need fans, although we are neither a sports club or a band? The fact is that your fan will proactively and proudly recommend you even to his closest friends or maybe even to his family, which is very risky to recommend someone. So if it's your fan, he will recommend you. Even more, fan can forgive you. Uh, as we started from the promises, of course, sometimes, even though you are trying hard, it might happen that actually you do not manage to fulfill or deliver on promise. And for the first time, you might be actually even able to explain why this happened. And maybe your customer will forgive you and give you a second chance. But if you manage not to fulfill the promise twice, then it's very likely, unlikely that he will give you another chance. But if it's your fan, if it's already your fan, and you do some kind of mistake, you won't be able to deliver upon your promise, then this fan is capable of forgiveness. Also, the fan believes in you. So it's not only the trust, it's something even more. So the fan protects your reputation if it's being hurt by someone else. So not only some rammers will uh, damage your reputation in front of your fan because he believes in you, but also in case they hear something bad about you, if they hear some criticism, they will actually protect you. They will fight for you. They will explain. They will look for some reasonable explanation why things didn't go the right way, for example, with another company, another customer. And to be fair, from the economical point of view, the concept of inherited trust, the concept where your customer recommends you to, uh, to another customer, to another potential customer of yours, is the most efficient way how to get new clients. So it's definitely worth to try to go deeper in your relationship with the customer to be able to turn him into the fan. The highest level of Adam Abraham Maslow um, hierarchy of needs is the self-actualization. This is really difficult because the person who reaches that level they are looking for development, for growth, for meaning. They are looking behind the goal to the meanings. So again, this is a lot of space for you to help them to grow uh, around those five vital elements of life of every organization. But this is also quite difficult task because the growth requires change. And change is something what human beings are actually not too much attracted to. 
because our bodies, our minds are all set up into energy saving mode. And routine saves a lot more energy than the new things, than learning. But because this is a very specific topic, we will probably cover it later on, uh, sometimes again. And by before the time, I will just uh, point you to uh, managing the complex changes model because what's written in it, it makes uh, quite a lot of sense and it might help you understand why some of the changes actually never manage to go to the final, final point. And we are going to the final point as well. And I promised at the very beginning that I will explain why there is a picture of my bike uh, in our presentation. So uh, what do you need to be able to handle the fact that the business is still being concluded among the human beings? And regardless how rational it looks, it's still quite a lot matter of psychology and understanding of people. I, I say like there are only three things you need to have to be successful businessman. First of all, it's empathy. You need to understand your customers and uh, you can either have the feeling or you can learn it. Learn some maybe obsolete principles, but still valid principles. Now, learning is not scary. Learning keeps everyone young because if you still have something to learn, then you're not done with your life. You're not completed yet. So you still have something to look forward to and remain curious. So learning is important and it gives you a lot. When I was 50, I decided to fulfill one of my uh, wishes from the youth. And I make my driving license for a bike and I've purchased first of all a smaller bike and then this one you can see. And what I have learned from my bike on my, in my 50s several important things. If you want to drive safe, you have to focus. If you go too slow, you fall. If you want to change the direction, you have to keep adequate speed. Otherwise, you can't turn the bike around. And if you want to get out of the scary curve, you need to accelerate. So it learned me a lot and it also gave me a lot of energy and energy is required because if you want to establish nice relationship with any human being, you have to put in it. You have to put in it a lot of preparation, a lot of focus, a lot of concentration and a lot of energy to build up all the circles, create the trust and then deliver the promises. Thank you for your attention and looking forward to meet you again.